Hi, I'm Louis Stoll and I'm an author illustrator. Welcome to my open studio. I'm currently working on a series about the Norse god Loki. It's called A Bad God's Guide. That's the series title. The first book is A Bad God's Guide to Being Good and the second book is Loki, A Bad God's Guide to Taking the Blame, which he does quite often. I live in Hackney, which is in London, England, with my wife Karen and my dog Buffy. I'll introduce you to Buffy later. Um, she's probably having a snooze right now. Um, Karen's filming, so you can't see her. In the world of my stories, the Norse god Loki has been sent down to Earth as a punishment by the god Odin. Loki's a trickster and he pulled one too many tricks, so down he went. Now he's in the form of a mortal boy, though he can shapeshift so he's not always a boy. Sometimes a horse, sometimes a girl. I tell the story in the form of a doodle diary, which is Loki's diary. So my style becomes 11-year-old Loki's style. Luckily I do draw like an ancient god in the body of an 11-year-old boy, which is fortunate. When I'm drawing, I work in my living room mostly, which is here um, at the dining table, which I don't think we've dined at because, since I became an illustrator. My wife does creative work in here too. She makes clothes and this is her sewing dummy. So when I'm drawing, even or when I'm writing, I like keeping a lot of books to hand to dip into. So I might be looking up a reference to a Norse myth in one of the original texts, or I might want to gain inspiration from a piece of art. I poured over this particular Tolkien bestiary for hours as a kid, but I still dip into it now when I'm imagining new creatures. It's got lots of different styles in it, um, but also a very kind of angry line that I enjoy in a lot of the styles. I also find, I find inspiration in people whose art styles are nothing like mine. So there's an artist called um, Simon Bisley, who's a comics artist, and he draws absolutely nothing like me. He's very painterly, uh, very detailed, um, but I love diving into his visual world when I'm just trying to get in the in zone. I think of it as sort of filling up the image bank in my mind. So it's like filling a well, and when you draw up water from the well, you, you turn it into your own water, but somehow the power of the art, other people's art, seeps up into you and influences what you're drawing, even even if it's only in tiny ways, even if it's just the way you draw a hand or the way you draw a horse. I tend to write my stories first and then my editor edits them and then my designer lays them out in a software called InDesign. I then take printouts of those designs and use a light box slash light. It's not really a box, it's more of a light pad, but I use that to trace the art and draw the art into the spaces around the text because it's very integrated. The, you know, the, the reading order has to be just right. So you've got a line of text and then you've got the image that goes with that text. Um, so there's often a bit of back and forth collaborative process with my designer where we'll kind of realize actually something would be much funnier if say we you know, reverse the order of the picture and the text. Um, but also I, you know, working with my editor, realising that sometimes the text isn't necessary at all. There's a bit that would be just much funnier if it was just a big picture. Um, and sometimes the sort of joke develops as I draw. So I, I like the unpredictability. I feel like that kind of chaotic process is very low-key. I work in a mix of doodles and single frame cartoons and comic strips, normally kind of max a double page spread of comics. So it's like I can't count six, six, 12 panels. Um, and that creates this, this slightly anarchic feel to the text, which works for the anti-hero who is the God of Chaos. I like to listen to a mix of music and podcasts when I'm working. It's usually music for writing and podcasts for drawing, because when I'm writing, I feel like the words part of my brain is already being used up. Whereas, so there's only kind of room for music. But when I'm drawing, I like the feeling of having a company. Um, it's like, you know, all these people chatting to me are my friends in the podcast. Sometimes I might listen to one that's about Norse mythology, um, which I get me in the mood for, for writing about, drawing about Loki. Um, but sometimes it might be completely unconnected, just something that helps me sit there for long enough and focus. Um, so I might listen to a podcast about the history of sewers or something about politics or maybe some comedy sketches. Though if I'm drawing a comic, I can only use music because it's kind of the words part of my brain as well as the drawing part. It's very, you know, it's the narrative part. Uh, when I'm trying to work out the composition of a scene, I like to use a mix of photographic reference, um, sometimes just photos of myself or my hands or, you know, anyone I can rope in. Um, or sometimes I might use, say, like a promotional image from a TV show that I think looks dramatic or some art. So for instance, for something I've been drawing for an upcoming Loki book, I used a promo shot from the TV show Hannibal, which was um, me using Mads Mikkelsen in his like very dramatic Hannibal pose. 
it's kind of like that um <laughs> for odin because i wanted odin to look quite intimidating and quite dramatic um odin doesn't eat people but i feel like he does have a sinister mads mickelson vibe so that worked you never quite know what odin's up to and then for another scene i used blake's series of red dragon paintings um if you're a hannibal fan you'll realize there's a link there too um so yeah i like to like to draw on lots of influences but also just Sometimes it's just a matter of like, I can't picture how the limbs would work in a certain situation until I can see someone doing it. So if, I don't know, you might need to know what that looks like. Normally it's very hard to photograph yourself doing that unless your wife is in. So, um, so yeah, I often use a lot of images from the internet. It takes a lot of attempts to get a character right. Sometimes the end product will be vastly different from the first draft of it. But sometimes the difference is more subtle. For example, with an early version of Loki, he has the same hair, but a completely different chin. My design for the Frost Giants, who are the baddies in my books, um, came pretty much right away. I, I'd already designed that the gods in their godlike form would be wearing kind of disco 70s inspired outfits. So it seemed natural to me that the Frost Giants, as their enemies, their sworn enemies, would be 1980s glam rock stars. Even though technically the giants came before the gods, so in theory it should be the other way around. But for me, character design is like what feels right, what gives the right vibe and creates the right atmosphere around the character. I draw using this type of pen. It's a Stedler pigment liner and it has a sort of wedge shaped nib. Um, they get blunt really quickly, so I get through quite a lot of these. Um, I'm actually experimenting with the idea of moving to digital in the future because I really hate scanning. Um, but I'm still very much in the experimental phase of that, and I admit I spend a lot more time making silly animations than I do actually practicing my drawing on my iPad. But I really like how ink feels. I love working with pen and paper. Um, I don't really do pencil roughs as a rule unless I'm really developing a character. I go straight to ink because I feel like how it feels. I like making all kinds of art as well as the drawings for my books. So I've got some paintings that I've done up here. One of kind of dragons fighting and one of a scene in hell. Then I also make sculptures sometimes. So this is a, um, a sculpture of, I suppose it's a kind of shrine to the god of dead technology. Because I tend to like collect, you know, old remote controls and stuff around the house. You just, you know, they just build up in the house. So I thought I'd make it into a little god. Um, and then I've got another little god here, um, which is the god of dead Kindles and dead phones. Um, the watch actually still works, which is miraculous because I made it about 15 years ago, but I've still got the same kind of watch now. But it's orange, so it matches my Loki cover. When I'm writing, I work in the office where there's this wallpaper that looks like a magical forest, so that when I'm writing, it just feels like I'm in a different world. Also, my desk goes up and down. So it's quite tempting just to play with it as it goes up and down Look, wall counter Sometimes I get stuck on a particular drawing and I can't work out how the composition should come together or I just keep drawing Loki's arms in a way that make them look like they're broken so at that point the only solution is to do something else I might go for a walk around my neighbourhood to the park I might pet my dog Buffy or go and play the piano. So I think it's time for a break now. Buffy, come here. This is Buffy. She is my studio mate and she's always there to distract me when I need distraction. Say hi, Buffy. Say hi. Hee <laughs> hee! There she goes. I like to keep collections of strange objects around me while I'm working or while I'm taking breaks. I find them quite inspiring. So they might be a memento of a past book. So I got this dragon that my wife got me to commemorate my book, The Dragon in the Library. Uh, sometimes that ideas for future books I haven't written yet. Like I've got this strange polystyrene head that looks a bit like a Roman emperor. I think I inherited it from when I used to work at an office and someone just had it lying around. I don't know why, but it became mine. And I feel like he should be in a story one day. I also have some Loki themed objects, um, like some statues of various gods, um, plus runes like on the cover. And uh, I've got this one creature 
terrifying creature that I found in a thrift store. I don't know who made it or why, and I worry for them, but it looks really creepy and I love that. It's got one normal foot and one cloven hoof, and it's got an axe that looked like it could do some real damage. I'm sort of torn because I want to include it in a story, but I feel like that story would give you nightmares, so I'm still deciding about that. So thanks everyone for coming to see my studio, and I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you.